Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about your early game building options and what you might have available to you before you're able to get into too much advancement. As you can see here, I have a really rough looking starter base, but at least it's giving me a little bit of protection from the light rain that you can see here, thus not putting out my fire pit. Uh, it's not going to give me much protection from mobs around me, but there are some different options available to you. Cob, Arid Pack Dirt, and Pack Dirt are some of them that will not fall off to the side. If you have anything turned on that will allow like uh, sand-like effects that will just kind of topple when they're piled too high, these will definitely help you out and you can craft them with uh, different options. But if you are curious about how to craft something that's in the world, you don't know if you can pick it up or not, you can always hold down sneak and then press H for the handbook. It will then bring up a recipe and the information for that item that you're currently looking at. In this case, cob. Any kind of dirt that you want to add in here, plus a little bit of dry grass, will get you a whole bunch of cob that you can work with. Going with the packed dirt, it's more or less just a bunch of dirt combined together. We'll get it packed and stable. If you're in a more arid region, then you're going to need a little bit of sand mixed in instead. Now these are not exactly the prettiest of options, but going with the dirt style, you do actually have some that aren't too bad. We've got dark and light mud bricks. They do come in a few different options, at least the dark one does have some slabs that when you place down will have one smooth side to them. As you can see here, I currently have this. But you might want to get used to placing your uh, half slabs as it is. Because with these, it's a little bit different from other block-like games. It depends on where you're looking on the block that you're placing up against. So in this case, if I'm looking at the center portion of this block, somewhere in the center here, it will then place it accordingly with that. In this case, I place it here and it places along the top. If I break it, this being a mud brick, there's a chance that it will end up being destroyed. So you're going to want to be a little bit more careful with your placement of mud bricks, but they're really easy to come by and not to worry about. Now, if you recall, when I looked up here, it placed on the top. Placing on the middle there, it will then place it flat up against it. Thus, the flat portion or smooth portion of this is now still at the top, and it's a half block here. Now there are other ways that you can customize these, whether it be with chisels or things of that nature, but this is just to give you a little bit of an idea that you do have a few options with your early stuff, even if you just take a little bit of hay grass. Combine it together and make yourself some of these. They're really easy to uh, pick up and break very simply, so they make an excellent makeshift door if you don't have the materials for that. But speaking of doors, there are a few that you can start with, that being a crude door. Crude door, you just take any of the axes available to you, whether it be Stone Age or a metal one, combine it with a few logs and some sticks, you'll get crude doors. Now, if you place these down properly, they can even open together when accessed one at a time. And they will stay in place currently. In previous versions, they would occasionally fall off the hinge when used frequently. And before we get too far into it, yes, there are lots of different options you can choose, but there are some basics that you're going to want to look for, that being a lot of cattails, sticks, and rope. Rope is made either from cattails, papyrus, or vines. You may need that for different recipes as well as some of the other options. And speaking of, you're going to probably want to look for different kinds of clay. There's blue clay and fire clay. They'll probably look somewhat disguised like this. You might be able to see them on your overhead map if you really have a keen eye and depending on the right season. But otherwise, this is what they look like in world. And just by breaking them with your hand or a shovel, you can get different bits of clay from them like this. Using those, you can make all sorts of different kinds of cobblestone, the mud brick options that I was talking about, molds, tiles, and plenty of other devices in the future. But for now, just know that that's something you'll probably want to look for if you want a little bit more custom style to your building bricks. Speaking of, of course, you've got your different kinds of logs available to you. These are your more common styles, but when you're out in the world, you're going to want to watch out for any kind of acacia or the pine logs that have resin on them. If you have any with resin on it, you probably don't want to chop that tree down because you cannot grow trees with resin on them. You have to find them in the wild. Then you'll probably want to mark them on a map so that you can come back and harvest that resin in the future. Just a little tip so that you don't end up destroying these things by accident. And if you do want to harvest these, just hold right click with an empty hand and you'll harvest your resin. You probably noticed that I also have some of these, a little bit of thatch. 
Looking at the thatch, you have different styles that are available to you, just simply made out of hay grass. So it depends on the style you want. We've got inside corners, outside corners, the, sla the slanted roofing and so on that you can place down. It looks really nice, keeps the rain off your head, but these are flammable items. So be aware that you don't want to have open flames or a torch in your hand while you're trying to ignite things by accident. Same with any of the woods or trees, forestry or just other goods like that. They are all somewhat flammable. Getting into something a little bit more hardcore, we've got cobblestone. There's a lot of different ones to choose from. Just scrolling through the survival handbook, you can see that there's a lot of different variations to choose from. You'll find most of them uh, depending upon the biomes that you're currently in. And you can usually see that by the different colorizations. Now there's different rock layers in the world as well, but you'll probably notice I've got a more or less a granity area here and somewhat of a sandstony area over here. But making these, you'll have lots of different options, whether it just be the cobblestone block itself, stairs, slabs, and so on that can be placed in different ways. And of course, most of these can be uh, chiseled later on once you have access to that. But there are other ways of making things like fences without needing wood. Not to say that you wouldn't want this to begin with, but looking at it, we've got rough hewn gates of all different wood types. So you just need to have some kind of ax, a few logs and sticks, and you can get yourself some gates, which will then open and close, similar to how the doors work, but obviously you can use them more for animal, uh, animal access or for yourself to keep animals out. And then you've got the fences as well, which when you craft just a few logs and sticks, you get a whole bunch of rough hewn fences which can come in a large variety of styles as well. Now this is just early game fences. Sometimes people just prefer this look over the more manufactured ones that are used with boards after you've progressed to using a saw. But beyond that, we have stones. If you break boulders or just pick up stones in general, you'll probably find yourself a really valuable resource, if not for crafting these different cobblestone blocks, for using them in other options. That being, you can make things like dry stone fences. By taking some of these, you can just craft those up simply. You, of course, have your cobblestone types, which requires a little bit of clay with any amount of stones around it. And then there's stone paths. These are also really simple to make. Just a few stones and a bit of dirt, and you get yourself stone paths. These, if you notice, increase your walking speed by 30%. But first, let's take a look at some of these stone fences. No, they don't have any kind of like wooden gate version. You'll have to use a wooden gate for them, but they are really nice to use for even if you're uh, stacking them or just using them for keeping animals together or your crops protected. That being said, stone paths do come in a little bit of variety as well. I'm just walking on here, walking over on this side. It's a lot slower. And of course, running is even faster. So if you want to have a constant way of getting back and forth to a location, this is a really good option for you. They also come in slabs and stairs. But don't forget, when you're trying to use any of these materials so that you can build yourself to the sky, you're probably going to want to have a few other options, and that is going to be ladders. These are simple items that are going to be invaluable to you, whether early game or late game. Now the standard wooden ladder recipe uh, it just consists of sticks, which is easy enough to come by, but it is time consuming to start gathering those. Alternately, later on, you're able to use boards to replicate those. And you, of course, get three at a time. With the alternate, a rope ladder, you can use some rope that I was showed you earlier, plus a few sticks, and you get this. It's a retractable ladder. They both have their different benefits and drawbacks. As far as the wooden ladder goes, you can place it down on the ground anywhere you like, then just click on it, to add more to it. And you'll start stacking it up into the sky. Now, if it has something that it's attached to up above, let me grab a bit of dirt, go into creative, place this here so you can see, and then when I break the bottom, it will actually stay in place, thus allowing you to, well, if you want, you can actually drop the ladder down just by clicking on the bottom half of the ladder. And you can harvest these just by hand or even faster with an ax. Now on the other side of that, a rope ladder you cannot place on the ground. It does not allow you to do so, but you can place it at the top if sneaking in place. Just by coming around here and sneaking while placing this, I can then place a whole bunch of ladders. 
And the ease of this is that if I want to regain my wooden ladders here, I can't actually do so without breaking them and then they fall down below, thus I wouldn't be able to get them. The rope ladder is reusable because I can just hold right click and retract the same ladder. So this is especially good for caving or just dropping down and coming back up something quickly, but if you want a more permanent solution, I'd recommend wooden ladders. And if you do want to conserve your ladder use, if you are using it up against a solid surface, you can actually go every other and still climb straight up without much issue. You could even go a further than that, break one of these ones, stand on top of this, and then try jumping up to the next one that would be a few more blocks away. It's a little bit trickier, but it is very doable. But there is something else that's rather important that I feel I should show you, and that is a way of actually getting away from all of this. And it, it's, I still count it as building. That's with a raft. Just by making one of these, a few logs of a certain type, because rafts come in a variety of styles. So it all depends on the wood type you use. But otherwise, add in some rope to that, you've got yourself a raft. Just by sneak, right clicking, you can place it, You'll notice here it's not currently floating. This is actually very poor placement on my part because it's caught on the ground. So if I were to sit on this, I'm not actually gonna go anywhere, whether I've got my ore in hand or otherwise. So I'm gonna wanna hit sneak to unmount. By sneak right clicking, I can pick this back up. Try again, aiming further out in the water. Sneak and right click to place it. And it's now out in the water. If you see water starting to flow up a little bit between the different planks, then you know you've got it right. It's also kind of doing a little bit of a bob. Grab yourself an ore, which can of course be of multiple different styles as well, depending upon the wood, and you get yourself a crude ore. Just right click on your raft, which can sit up to two people on it, so don't be afraid to include a friend along. And then just however you want to use your directional controls, you can then start moving. Just by pressing with the arrow keys, you can start going along a path. Now, this isn't particularly fast. Swimming is ever so slightly faster, but it is a lot safer from, uh, well, as you can see, different dangers out in the wild, whether it be predators or mobs or something like that, because they're not often as good a swimmer as you are on your raft. Also, an added benefit, you can hold a torch while doing this, so you can even see while in the water, and your torch won't go out. Unless, of course, you dismount in a very poorly chosen spot and your torch goes out. Now why show you the raft? Well, because you're probably gonna have to go out and get a lot of these materials. And it's just a really easy way of getting around early game that keeps you safer while you're exploring a little bit to try and find some of these different options. Now, I know this one probably wasn't one of the most exciting ones that I've done before, but don't worry, we'll be getting into a little bit more interesting content with the next video. So if you did enjoy this, and perhaps some others that I might have done with Vintage Story, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.